Hi, uh, I'm Danielle. Today I'm going to be talking about regular expressions um, and some of the pitfalls that you can run into in using them um, that can lead to some security vulnerabilities. Um, so just a quick outline. First I'm going to get into the theory of regular expressions as well as regular languages, kind of how they work and why they work the way that they do. Um, then moving into the practical, um, there's a JavaScript regex object that I'm going to get into. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a redos attack, which is something that uh, users can use to kind of exploit a vulnerability of certain types of regular expressions that you might use on your application. Um, so this is probably something that I don't even need to tell you, but regular expressions are both terribly awkward and extremely useful. Um, you've probably seen, you know, problems that you know that you can use a regular expression for. Um, that are, you know, can be summed up very concisely, but are surprisingly difficult to implement uh, using like traditional JavaScript. Um, so while regexes have very opaque syntax and it's very difficult to kind of parse out what they do in kind of like a human sense of reading it, um, they are very powerful. Um, so they are also easy to get in hot water with. Um, another quote, some words of wisdom. Uh, regular expressions are like hot sauce. If you drench your plate in hot sauce, you're going to be very, very sorry. Um, so again, with great power comes great responsibility. They are really, really great tools to use, but you can get in, your, in over your head really quickly. Um, so for example, here's kind of a canonical example um, of a use case for regular expressions would be password validation. So looking at this as a person, it's very difficult to figure out what this means. Um, if you break it down a little bit, it's a little easier. You can see there are a few distinct groups. Um, and then if you break it out a little bit more, you can see that this one, I'm not going to get into the details of what every single character is doing because there are cheat sheets online and that's not really the interesting part. Um, but so this essentially is checking for two uppercase letters, uh, three lowercase letters, two digits, and a special character. Um, and so even if you don't know exactly what's going on character by character, you can kind of figure that out. Um, so this is the mathematical equation, mathematical definition of what regular expressions are. Um, so the theory behind regular expressions is that they're rooted in regular languages. And so a regular language is a classification that was first created by Noam Chomsky um, in, his, in his linguistic hierarchy. Um, but regular languages can be defined in a lot of different ways. Um, but this is the definition that's really relevant to us here. Um, is that they are a sequence of characters that define a search pattern, which makes sense. Um, regular expressions were initially pioneered by Stephen Colclaney, um, who's a famous mathematician. Um, he has a bunch of algorithms and theorems and things named after him, but he is most known for regular expressions. Um, so in the same way that regular expressions define a search pattern, a regular language is the language of a regular expression. Um, and this probably doesn't make much sense to you now, but I hope it will soon. Um, if we have an alphabet sigma, um, and as well as the empty set and epsilon, which is the empty string, um, both epsilon and the empty set are regular languages. For each element in the, in the alphabet, that element, the set containing that element is a regular language. And if sets A and B are regular languages, so are their unions and concatenations as well as a star. So for example, here we have two sets. That's their union, concatenation, and the A star. Um, again, I'm not going to get into like the mathematical detail, but hopefully you'll recognize A star is actually the set of all binary numbers. So I mentioned previously that there are a couple different ways to define regular languages. Um, another really important definition is that a regular language is something that can be accepted by a Turing machine. So this is kind of a map of a specific kind of Turing machine. This is called a finite state machine or a finite automaton. Um, state machines work by basically they have a single state and then they read in an action and they change their state based on this action. So this is kind of a, a toy state machine that I created which is all about waking up in the morning. So on the, re the left side over there we have no alarm is set and that's your beginning state. And then from there, you'll notice that you only have one valid path out of that state. The only way you can get out is by setting the alarm. And then your state changes to having an alarm set. From that point, you can 
change your mind and say, never mind, I'm not doing that tomorrow, turn it off, or you can continue on. So you can see this is kind of a real world example of how states would change. Um, so this is a little more mathematical. This is the finite state machine. Um, hopefully you'll see that is for the language of binary numbers. So in regular expressions, that caret is the start of a string. The dollar sign is the end of the string. Um, so on the start of the string, you can either go straight to the end, which is the empty string, epsilon. You can go to either 0 or 1. And then at that point, you can either repeat yourself, go to from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0, until finally you end. Um, as I said, kind of regular expressions of finite state machines go hand in hand. So this is the regular expression that also defines this state machine um, and the regular language that we as humans have given to the set of zeros and ones, which is binary numbers. Um, so getting into the practical for a little bit now, there is a native object in JavaScript called regex with a P. Um, it has a couple really useful prototypal methods, um, including execute and test. So for execute, you'll see over on the left side, um, it will either it will take in a string and search for that string based on the pattern you defined by your regular expression. Um, if it doesn't match, it'll return null. If it does, it'll return an array that gives you the exact substring that it matched on, the index where it first matched, and the original input. Um, so that's really helpful. And then for the test prototypal method, it works in the same way, but it returns a Boolean true or false, um, whether or not the string matched on the pattern. Um, another great use case is not on the prototype, but uh, using the string replace method. So you can use that as your first argument in the replace method, and anything that ma any substring that matches on the pattern, you can replace. Um, so as I said, there are ways that you can get in hot water with these. Um, one is a redos attack, which is a regular expression denial of service. Um, essentially, a denial of service attack is when an application gets completely overwhelmed and just crashes and freezes and hangs indefinitely. Um, so one type of regular expression that's susceptible to these uh, is regular expressions that have grouped repetitions in it. You can see here I have an evil regular expression. So we have A, B repeated and then repeated again. Um, so the theory behind this, going back to the state machines, which represent a regular expression, um, in order for a state machine to accept a string, meaning that it would match the regular expression, it just has to reach the end state. That's the condition. In order for it to definitively say it doesn't match, it has to exhaust all possible patterns, all possible paths to, this, to the final state, realize it never reached it, and then say, okay, I did my best. It didn't match. Um, it's kind of the classic, you know, you can't prove that a unicorn doesn't exist. It's very, very difficult to. Um, so I have a quick little application that I made, if I can, here. Um, so I can basically hang my own computer, which is kind of a pain, but, um, so normally the way that sites safeguard against this, which you probably experience in like REPL IT or something, is that if it takes too long, for example, if you get stuck in an infinite loop, it'll just quit out after like five seconds or something. Um, but, <laughs> mine doesn't do that. Um, so essentially the... The theory here is that you make it, so this is about 30 or so characters, so it's very easy. You can imagine, you know, a really malicious hacker doing something with a thousand characters and like really, really killing your computer. Um, so the, the theory is it almost matches, so I'm repeating AB, and then at the very end I'll put like a Z. Um, so basically it's incorrect, but the regular expression is going to have to try every single possible path before it can definitively determine that it's incorrect. Um, and for each character, the number of paths doubles. It's essentially 2 to the n. So if you have 40 characters here, that's 2 to the 40th power number of paths. Um, so if I submit this, this might take like 15 to 20 seconds. Um, 
but or actually, I didn't count. It might it might actually kill it. Um, let's see. Yeah, this will take about 15, 20 seconds, um, and you can see as it gets longer and longer and longer, it will just get long. The time itself will get longer and longer and longer until eventually, um, your server is just crushed. Um, and that will, I mean, this might take a minute at most, so I won't make you wait through this, but you can see everything is completely frozen up. Um, if some, one of your users is either ignorant or malicious, um, and you happen to have one of these regular expressions that you haven't safeguarded against, oh, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> It'll just, so if this was a real production application and this was my real server, it would completely take down everything. Um, so regular expressions, very useful, definitely use them, but think about what you're doing when you use them, because um, obviously they can lead to a lot of problems. Um, thank you.